Singapore has constructed one of the world's best rapid transit systems in the world, with over 216 kilometers of track length and serving an annual average of 1.2 billion people. Singapore's mass rapid transit is one of the region's best metro systems. Several prominent journals even named it the most extensive driverless system in the world. The government has spent a total of over 150 billion Singaporean dollars on this infrastructure alone, making it the world's most expensive on both a per kilometer and absolute basis. Nine lines surrounding the governing destinations and 187 stations were constructed so far with this mega bill. With over 579 trains in operations and a top speed of 90 km per hour, it has ensured excellent access to destinations in Singapore. MRT's rolling stock is also some of the best in the world. It has cost the country a total of $6 billion to purchase these state-of-the-art driverless trains. These were manufactured by top corporations, from Japan's Kawasaki Heavy Industries and Nippon Shark to France's multinational rolling stock business Alstom, and its up-and-coming electric CJ-151 from South Korea's Hyundai Rotom, and a lot more. Although it has brought such a massive fee, it has also shown how essential the MRT system is. Not only has it helped citizens to move from one destination to the other, but it has also helped and benefited tourists from wanting to see more of what Singapore offers. While it is a magnificent infrastructure, it is also the oldest in the Southeast Asia region. It dates its way back to 1967, when the Singaporean government and the United Nations had a long-term plan for constructing the country's future infrastructure. The idea was brought up as Singapore was a tight space country and the need for an excellent transportation system was a necessity. It was only until 1972 that the government has officially carved out the plan called the Singapore Mass Transit Study. It was this study that would spark a great debate on whether Singapore would have an all-bus system or an all-rail system. Several studies were done from the year it was brought up until 1982. Even specialists from well-known research institutes like Harvard University brought their claim. Thankfully, a rail system was the one chosen to be built for Singapore and not a bus system. Even though the specialists from Harvard University have recommended using a bus system, as it is a lot cheaper and more sufficient for the 1990s traffic. The reason they had chosen the rail system over the bus system was that they viewed it from an economic perspective. It wasn't just a transportation investment in Singapore, but a long-term boost in investor confidence that would help send real estate value to another level. And in October 1983, the construction has officially started. This was the largest public work ever in the country by that time. There was a target of 67 kilometers of track to be completed and 42 stations, 15 of which would be underground. The first line that was to be completed was called the North-South MRT Line. It started its commercial operations in November 1987, where it ran from Yochu Kang Station all the way to Toa Peo Station. A few months later, several more stations had opened along the new line called East-West Line. The rolling stock that ran through the first few years of Singapore's MRT was the C-151, manufactured by Kawasaki Heavy Industries. The rest of the rail system had rapidly opened, from Jurong East Station to Boon Lay Station. And it wasn't even a year after the official opening of the MRT that the government had announced its expansion plans. This proves that the MRT had been a success and the governing parties want to keep its benefits rolling. The notable extension of this move was the so-called Woodlands MRT station. The expansion eventually opened its doors to commercial use by 1996, and almost 12,000 people already had used it in its first hour of operations. Come the next decade, several more lines and stations were constructed. These are the Dove Station, Expo MRT Line, and in 2003, the North East Line was opened to the country. This time, it isn't a normal rail line. It is among the world's first fully automated heavy rail lines. As it is an automated system, it is then operated by driverless rolling stocks. These trains were the so-called C751A and C751C, constructed by Alstom. Circle MRT line then was constructed, followed, and opened its doors by 2009, followed by the downtown line in 2013. Both have become world-class infrastructures, with technology at the roots of its automation. The most recent line to be opened was the so-called Thomas East Coast MRT line. This line had finished Phase 1 on January 2020. It is even said that when this line became fully operational, it would become the world's longest driverless rapid transit line, stretching over 43 kilometers and 32 stations. The line is even expected to serve over a million commuters every single day. That's impressive. Currently, however, it is still at its Phase 1, and the other stages will be opened at later dates. This line is currently being served by the Mandate Depot and its rolling stocks of CT251. 
Singapore's MRT has proven to be such a game-changer for the country, although it has received several challenges in the past, such as major service disruption, delayed building plans that some even took 10 years to be approved, problems related to its construction as drilling several kilometers underground is no easy feat, and so much more. Even after all that, it has still proven to be an excellent use good enough for the country to have more of what's coming. Future expansion that has been announced so far are Thomas East Coast Line's other phases, Jurong Region MRT Line, which was announced way back in 2013 and will be open by 2027. This would become the 7th MRT Line and be over 24 kilometers long. The 8th line will be called the Cross Island MRT Line. This one is an interesting one. Why? because once it finishes its construction around 2030, it would be the longest fully underground line at 58 kilometers. This would surpass the east-west MRT line at 57 kilometers. Other future plans announced at the time of this writing are just expansions for current lines. In conclusion, Singapore's MRT line had come from just being a few kilometers long to become one of the world's best transportation systems. It has helped lower transportation costs for individuals living in the country by removing the necessity of needing a car to travel. It has increased rents and property prices throughout the years, benefiting homeowners a massive upside. In a 2019 study, over 65% of households can easily walk to the train station, and this is slowly improving with the government wanting to make sure that everyone can easily access a train just by walking. A McKinsey report published way back in 2018 had stated that Singapore's public transportation system is indeed one of the best and most affordable systems. Singapore's public infrastructure had always been renowned as one of the world's best, from its Changni Airport to Marina Bay and so much more. While you might think that this is already excessive for the country, it actually has just been the start. The Significant Infrastructure Government Loan Bill, also known as Singa, was passed on May 2021. This bill was known as one of Singapore's biggest moves into creating future massive plans for its infrastructures. It was said that they would raise over 90 billion Singaporean dollars for its future developments. This just proves the strong economic power of Singapore as it keeps thriving in a stronger future. It is one of the world's best wealth management hubs. Innovation and entrepreneurship are their keys to success in the future, and Singapore is on its way to shaping its country towards it. It holds some of the world's largest corporations. Infrastructure spending is just a necessity to keep its international standing. Although, as we all know, that there was a recent crisis happening, and it has struck Singapore's public transportation just like every other country in the world. Singapore's measure was the so-called circuit breaker, where several methods, such as the MRT being impacted and other public transportation is closed or running at less capacity. But even though all of this had happened, Singapore has emerged as one of the leading countries to have good vaccination rates. Anyway, what do you think about Singapore's Grand Metro Rail Transit System? Will it continue to be one of the world's best? What do you think would have happened if Singapore had implemented an all-bus system instead of an all-rail system? Share with us your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to leave us a like and follow us for more amazing videos. Thanks for watching.